What's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with the next video in my Hackintosh hardware series. Today we'll be looking at the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 670 from Gigabyte. Getting right into it, the first thing you probably noticed about this card is holy fans. This is part of what Gigabyte calls the wind force cooling solution. The card has tons of heat fins, heat pipes, and intake fans to keep the card nice and chilly. Despite all those fans, the card still manages to run nice and quiet even under a heavy load. Getting into the performance of the card, let's talk outputs. On the back of the card, we have a pretty standard port configuration, two DVI, one HDMI, and a display port. You can use any two of these ports at any given time. Each port works great on OS X. This card features 1,344 CUDA cores, which really come in handy with applications like After Effects and Premiere. Basically what CUDA does is offset some of the more complicated tasks of the editing process onto the GPU instead of the CPU. This offers not only faster performance, but it also frees up some CPU usage for other tasks. If you want to learn how to enable CUDA on this card, I have you covered. Feel free to click the annotation to see how it's done. The GTX 670 definitely holds its own on the benchmarks as well. For this video, I figured Cinebench would be able to get the job done for us. The results of the Cinebench test were right on par with what I was expecting. The card managed a score of 42.66 frames per second. Basically, this card will be able to perform quite well with just about any task you throw at it. Now that you have an idea of how this card performs, I'm sure you're wondering how much pain and suffering you're going to have to go through to get it up and running. Actually, you're in luck, as this card works out of the box in Mountain Lion. With that said, there's only one thing you need to make sure of. When using NVIDIA graphics cards, you'll need to ensure that graphics enabler is set to no. This is a function of the bootloader, so this flag could be a little bit different depending on what bootloader you're using. Personally, I would recommend Chimera, which I'm sure most of you are using anyway. Aside from that, there is no additional kernel flags needed for this card to work right out of the box. For power, this card requires 6-pin and 8-pin PCI connectors. A power supply of 550 watts or greater is required to power the card. When all is said and done, I can definitely recommend this card for your Hackintosh. With that said, the card isn't for everyone. This card is for the content producer that wants to exercise those CUDA cores and be sure that video memory isn't a bottleneck in their workflow. For the $400 price tag, you're getting fantastic cooling, pun intended, 2GB of video memory, lots of CUDA cores, and out-of-the-box compatibility within Mountain Lion. If you're in the market for a card of these specs and have the budget, then this is going to be one of the better cards on the market. Be sure to let me know what you guys think. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and I hope to see you guys back here soon.